If you saw this message recently in your Home Assistant settings menu, don't worry. First, you have until the 2022.12 release before it becomes an issue. And second, if you stick around, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. I think this is going to be a shorter video than the recent ones, mostly because I need to spend some time this week fixing my MQTT sensors. And if you're watching this video, you may have some MQTT entities you need to fix as well. If this message popped up in your Home Assistant settings recently, just know that right now it's more of a warning than anything else. Something that you need to address, but not something you need to address today. The bottom line is, nothing's broken. But it is something you need to address before the 2022.12 release this year, or it will actually break your MQTT setup. Back in the 2022.6 release of Home Assistant, the team started working on an overhaul on how MQTT entities were defined. Previously, if we had an MQTT sensor we wanted to set up in Home Assistant, we defined it under the sensor integration, and then used the platform MQTT to define it as an MQTT entity. The old way looks like this. Depending on how you have your Home Assistant configuration set up, these could currently be defined in your sensor.yaml, in a package, or even in your main configuration.yaml file. But since that 2022.6 release, they should be defined under the MQTT integration. Adding to the confusion is there appears to be more MQTT integrations now listed in the documentation under integrations. Maybe these have been here all along and I just never noticed. But the bottom line is, none of the MQTT entity attributes, either required or optional, have changed. All of them remain the same. The only real change is where we define those MQTT entities. You have a couple of different ways to fix this depending on how your configuration is set up. If you're one of those that defines your entire configuration in the configuration.yaml file, first, you're someone that I don't fully understand. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Second, you just have to find where that MQTT sensor is defined in your configuration. Copy it starting with the platform line and paste it under the MQTT colon heading in your configuration.yaml file or the appropriate file in your packages directory if you're one of those using packages. Then change that dash platform colon MQTT to sensor colon and add a dash in front of the name making sure that you indent the sensor information and line up the sensor attributes under the name like this. You don't need to include a sensor colon for each one, just make sure you have a dash in front of the name to denote that it's a new entity. Once you've moved all of your sensors over to the MQTT integration, it's time to save the file and either restart Home Assistant or reload your manually defined MQTT entities using the developer tools. Or if you want to better organize your MQTT entities and put them in a single file, you can create a MQTT.yaml file in your configuration. To create this MQTT.yaml file, we're going to need to have some way to be able to edit our actual YAML files. And I suggest the Studio Code Server add-on for your Home Assistant, which allows you to edit these right in the browser. And I've got that set up here on this dev box. I'll just click on Studio Code Server, which takes me to my config. And this is a fairly new machine, so there's not a lot here. But we need to add the MQTT one. So for this file editor, we just need to come up and click this new file button. And then we're going to create our MQTT.yaml. And there we go. There's nothing in there yet. But we also need to tell Home Assistant that we're going to be using this MQTT yaml file and we do that in our configuration so here you can see where they've defined automations script and scenes so we're going to have to add one here for mqtt mqtt colon exclamation include space mqtt dot yaml And that's it. We've now set that up to use the file and we can start adding things into this file. Now, as mentioned 
before, we talked about that the new definitions around these MQTT entities included the MQTT colon, and then our sensor colon, right? But since we've defined this line right here, this takes place of the MQTT colon. So in this file, we don't need to include that. We just need to include the sensor colon for our sensor entities. So now under here, we could move all of those MQTT entities over here. And that would look something like this. So now we have each of our entities defined here. Under the sensor colon, we have a dash name for each one of these entities. That dash name is going to differentiate between the different sensor entities we have. So if you have multiple entities under this sensor colon, make sure you have at least one dash at the start of each new entity. And if you have other entities that you want to add, you could also include them in this file. For example, if you had some lights, you could put a light colon section. Then under that, put your light entities. And the same goes for binary sensors, switches, or any other MQTT entity type. But once you've got everything that you want added in this file, just hit save. And then we need to either restart Home Assistant or we need to reload the MQTT entities, which we can do by going to Developer Tools, go to the YAML section, and then click this Manually Configured MQTT Entities, which will reload any of those entities you've manually defined in your YAML. If you don't see this option for reloading your YAML configuration, you need to turn on Advanced Mode, which you can do in your profile, and just flipping the switch here next to advanced mode. But then after that, you should be good to go. And that's it, one less thing to worry about when we finally get to that 2020.2 release later in the year. All of the examples I covered in this video were about sensors. But if you have other manually defined MQTT entities like lights or binary sensors, those need to be updated as well. They all follow a similar pattern. Instead of using sensor, you'll use light colon or switch colon or binary underscore sensor colon. In any case, the docs have you covered, so check there if you're unsure about any of it. And if you need clarification about anything I covered in this video, be sure to drop a comment and let me know. If you want to support Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find links to the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store, as well as affiliate links and even a link to buy me a coffee if you so choose in the description of this video. Or just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button. And consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.